CDS Lesson 4 CDS Introduction to Medication Support Administration of Medications and Treatments After completing this lesson, you will increase your understanding about administering medications, self-medication. Administering medications. General rules. 1. Staff must successfully complete CDS medication training as well as the on-site review and testing components of medication module assessment prior to administering medications. CDS training alone does not allow you to administer medications independently. 2. You must only prepare medication for one person at a time. 3. You cannot pre-pour medication. 4. Only the staff person who gave the medication can be the staff person that initials and signs. 5. If a staff person is going to administer a medication to an individual while away from the program, that same staff person has to be the one to prepare the medications prior to the trip and sign the medication sheet when you return back to program. 6. No medication can be signed for prior to administration. 7. Following universal precautions, staff members and individuals should wash their hands before medications are administered. However, medications should still not be touched. 8. Medications should be placed into a small cup to be given to the individual to avoid dropping the medication. 9. Medications should be given with water unless otherwise prescribed. 10. If an individual coughs or spits out medication, Contact the prescriber before readministering. Follow the instructions you receive, document on the back of the medication sheet, and follow your agency policies. 11. Tablets cannot be crushed or capsules opened without written authorization from the prescribers. A. Written authorization should say what it can be put into, for example, applesauce, ice cream, etc. B. The individual should be told that the medication is in the food unless otherwise documented. C. Staff must remain with the individual until the food with medication is finished. 12. Try your best to minimize distractions for both yourself and the individual receiving medication. For example, taking turns, etc. 13. Try to make this process as private as possible, for example, one-to-one, -one, speaking quietly, etc., with the preference of the individual's needs and dignity as priority. 14. Follow any special instructions included with medication, for example, keeping eyes closed for 10 minutes, sitting upright for a specified period of time, etc., and provide support as needed. 15. Never leave medication unattended. 16. Check prescriber instructions or other documentation, for example, service plan, agency policy, etc., to determine if more than one type of medication can be administered in a cup at the same time for the individual. 17. As per the standards for community residences for individuals with Developmental Disabilities, NJAC 1044A, and Standards for Adult Day Programs, a supply of medication adequate to ensure no interruptions in the medication schedule shall be available to individuals at all times. As a general guideline, refill the prescription when a five-day supply remains. Finish the previous prescription before starting the new one. Avoiding errors and maintaining safety. 1. Don't take shortcuts. 2. Be patient. This process should not be rushed. 3. Avoid distractions while administering medication. 4. Give your full attention to the task. 5. Stay with the individual until the medication has been taken. 6. Watch the person swallow. 7. 
make sure that the food that contains the medication is finished. For example, applesauce, ice cream, etc. 8. Allow time for special instructions to be completed. For example, eye close for a prescribed time frame after eye drops, laying down after a suppository, etc. 9. Prepare medication for only one individual at a time. 10. Never hide your error. 11. Never cover for another staff person's error. Administering tablets or capsules. Tablets and capsules are the most common forms of medication you will need to administer. With all medications, there are specific instructions with regard to administration. Follow the information provided by the pharmacy in the administration of these medications. How to properly administer tablets or capsules. 1. Wash hands and gather all necessary supplies, for example, cup, water, etc. 2. Obtain key and open box. 3. Using the medication administration record sheet, find the correct medication to be administered. 4. Compare pharmacy label to the copy of prescription and to the medication administration record sheet to assure correct medication to be administered. 5. Count the correct dosage of medication and pour into cup without touching the medication. 6. Compare the pharmacy label to the copy of the prescription and to the medication administration record sheet to check again that the correct medication was to be administered. 7. Hand the cup to the individual receiving medication. Encourage the individual to put medication directly in mouth from cup. 8. Offer water to the individual unless otherwise prescribed. 9. Watch for the person to swallow the medication and follow any special administration instructions food, sit upright, etc. 10. Initial the medication administration record sheet for the correct medication, day, and time. 11. Sign and initial the medication administration record sheet if administering medications for the first time that month on that sheet. 12. Ensure the packaging is secure and put everything back in the medication box. 13. Lock box and secure key. The following video shows how to administer medication from a pharmacy bottle or vial. Hi Nina, how are you? Good, you? Good. I'm going to give you your 8 o'clock. The following video shows how to administer medication from a bubble pack. Hi Nina, how are you? Good, you? Good. I'm going to give you your 8 o'clock med. Okay. Employee washed hands and gathered all necessary supplies. Employee obtained key and opened box. Using the medication sheet, the employee found the correct medication to be administered. The employee compared the pharmacy label to the copy of the prescription to the medication administration sheet to assure a correct medication was to be administered. The employee counted the correct dosage of medication and poured into cup without touching the medication. Employee compared the pharmacy label to the copy of the prescription to the medication administration sheet to check again that the correct medication was to be administered. This is your dilantin. It'll help with the seizures. Employee handed cup to the individual receiving the medication. Encouraged the individual to put medication directly in mouth from cup. Here, take a sip. Employee offered water to the individual, unless otherwise prescribed. Excellent. 
Employee watched for the person to swallow the medication and followed any special administration instructions. Did you have breakfast today? I did. What did you have? I had oatmeal and juice. Uh, what type of juice? Orange juice. Uh, I know you love that. I do. Employee initialed the medication sheet for the correct medication, day, and time. Employee signed and initialed the medication administration record if administering medications for the first time that month on that sheet. Is this your cooking day today, Nina? Yes. Awesome. Have a great day at program. You too. See em you later. Employee ensured the packaging is secure and put everything back in the medication box. Employee locked box and secured key. Self-medication. Many people want to and are capable of self-medicating. An IDT meeting can be held to discuss and evaluate this possibility. The person's service plan must state that the person can self-medicate. Self-medication. If someone you support shows interest in or you recognize that they have the capability to be self-medicating, this should be discussed with the person's interdisciplinary team, IDT. A self-medication assessment must be completed for each individual and presented at an IDT meeting. This assessment can include factors such as the person's willingness to self-medicate and their ability to manage the medication physically, behaviorally, and medically. The IDT will evaluate the results and determine if the individual is ready to start the process. This first must be identified in the person's service plan. If the individual has been determined through their service plan process to self-medicate, medication will not be stored with everyone else's. Their medication must be locked for the safety of others. No medication sheet is required. If a person lives alone and self-medicates, the person's medications don't need to be locked. This information needs to be documented in the service plan, for example, IHP, ELP, ISP. If people living together self-medicate and all understand which medication is theirs and that they should not take each other's medication, they don't need to be locked. If a person has been determined through the person's support plan to self-administer, their medications are stored separately. This information needs to be documented in the person's service plan, for example, IHP, ELP, and JISP. Periodic review of the person's ability to self-medicate should be done. Agencies usually have their own policy and procedures, which must be followed for individuals who are self-medicating or learning to be self-medicating. The review should be done respectfully and should not interfere with the person's independence.